Range Rover Sport, the most exciting SUV. When it came out, it made everyone go wild. Everybody wanted a piece. In 2004, they showed us the Stormer concept in Vesuvian Orange. It was different, it was low, it was sporty, it was chunky. It looked like it could overtake anything. 2005 came the first generation of Range Rover Sport. My dad had one. I absolutely loved it. I remember the school trips, going through the snow. The off-road capabilities were epic. And I always remember my mates, head turn all the time. Oh, your dad's car's wicked. We've got three generations now of Range Rover Sport. So I wanna to treat today's episode as a little bit of a buying guide. I wanna show you things to look for if you're interested in buying an old range and also things to be aware of. So let's get this started. Right, here it is, the Gen 1. It's a 2009, it's a HSE top trim level. For that time, the autobiography came out later. So little things to look for. You can notice that the badges, have a good look at the badges. They are known to wear, but it's an easy fix. Get bits and bobs off eBay, or you can just wrap them. Again, just look at the bodywork. Normally the bodywork would give you a lot of good signs. There's, there's hardly any scratches or scuffs on this. No big dents that um, won't buff out, just a few little bits here and there, but it's fine. Uh, wheels, check the wheels. It's a few scuff marks on that, but it's good. And then rear pillars, all right? Known to fade, easy fix though. Um, no dents or scratches on that. So check out those rear pillars. This one's in great condition. So let's have a little look. Let's check out the interior. Suspension, suspension is a bit of a known fault. And one thing you can test when jumping in the car is pressing the suspension, seeing if it goes up and down. Now we've got a great display here as well, 4x4 info, and this visual display is brilliant to see if all of your air struts aren't, leak, uh, aren't leaking. Sorry, so all these little squares, the orange squares, and you've got the green bar, that is all level. You wanna park it on a level surface and you will see if there's a leak or not. At the moment, it's looking good. The air compressor has been known to go as well and be faulty, so check in the surface history if it's had one, if it hasn't had one replaced, just have some in your reserve pot ready. Now, let's check it out. Let's check out this car. I'm gonna to go top height, press up, and this is the off-road height selected. It's moving, I can see the visual display, that's great. All the wheels are moving up great, the air compressor is working, and we are now at off-road height. And then what you can do now is press down, Send it back down to normal height selected, and then again to access height, which makes it a little bit easier to get in and out. But what is great is you've got a visual display, so you can physically see that there is no leak on the air struts. Sometimes when, you, when you're looking along and you see a Range Rover parked up, and it's on the wonk or on the piss, as they say, that's because the suspension, there's a leak in one of the struts and it's sitting a bit wonky. Um, so air compressor, suspension, Check it out, this one, it's all good. Interior, a known fault or common problem is the headline sagging. Now I'm looking in, it doesn't look too bad. There is a little bit of sagging just in this crease and the pillars, it's just come away a little bit there and there. Not too much of a problem, you can get it sorted. And a cracked dash. This is a good example because it's in good, Nick, isn't it? Look at this. Look at this dash. Smooth all around here, nice and smooth. Even the seats, no cracks in here, and even the rear seats look great. All of this looks good, just something to be aware of. Let's talk about the engine block. This is the 2.7 V6 diesel. Two faults some of us might be aware of. If not, listen up. Oil pump housing, problem with that. Can be refitted and get a new one. The crankshaft, there's a design fault. So, from about 186,000 miles, they have reports that the crankshaft snaps. And obviously you don't want that, that's bad. So apparently there's a, a bit of a design fault with the counterweight and the rod bearing journal in the 2.7 V6. And it's also known to be in the three liter that came in 2010 that replaced the 2.7. And they've got reports of that crankshaft breaking at around 65,000. Something to be aware of. Turbos. Check with the full surface history, has the turbo had a new one? Because it's a known fault, they go, oh, car's over 10 years, the turbo works hard and they can wear out. Do not cheap out and buy a cheap turbo. Make sure you go to a reputable specialist and get a decent turbo. 
Now, when you get a turbo fitted, the engine bay is super tight and the body actually lifts off from the chassis. Some technicians that I've spoke to said it takes them eight hours. So just factor in, that's probably gonna be a, a big labor right there. Also, some technicians say I can get it done in two hours, mate. So I'm not sure there. So literally the, the body comes off and they can work and do that. So check the turbo, full service history. If it's been done, awesome, replaced. You're on your second generation of parts, awesome. If not, save some cash. After driving the car for around 10 or 15 minutes, just wind the window down and listen outside for any knocks or squeaking. This could be referencing that you need new anti-roll bar links. Now, not of massive paramount importance, but when you go around the corners in this heavy vehicle, you will notice more roll. Aftermarket parts. Be aware if your Range Rover's got aftermarket parts like brake pads, they are gonna wear a lot quicker. Just try and stick to genuine OEM parts because if you have aftermarket parts, it could affect the reliability and safety. Fuel pumps and differentials have been known to just break without warning. So check your full service history and see if those parts have been replaced. If not, factor that in. A test drive is essential when you're looking to buy an old school Range Rover. One thing to look for is serious vibration in the steering wheel. We'll test that out later as that's been a known fault. And take a rear passenger with you to sit in the back because people have said it's very firm on the rear bench. Again, that's a preference thing. But if you take a rear passenger with you, you can find out for yourself. As this is the 2.7 diesel V6 engine, I need to be aware of has it had a new cam belt. Cam belts, when they go, you're in a world of hurt. So you need to have a little look through the full service history. Have a little look. Has the cam belt been done? Go through it, because if it hasn't, you're looking at around 65,000 to 105,000. That is the range, or seven years, because it's a perishable uh, part. If it hasn't had the cam belt done, be aware that you might want to get that done and at your next service. This one's done 82,000. And a good thing to do as well is when you get the cam belt done, at the rear of the engine, there is an injection pump belt that you can replace at the same time. Right, I've started her up. Time to take this beast out on the road and see what it's all about. Six speed transmission into drive, parking brake off. There we go, and that works. That's another little thing to just, just check out is the parking brake. So one of the things I wanna to talk to you about is have a spare pot of money, have a reservoir around two to three thousand pounds just spare because you are going to need a bit of a budget when buying one of these cars you cannot run one of these older generation range rover sports or other range rovers on a small budget get that out of your head if you see a really good affordable one get it out of your head that it's going to be cheap to run because it is not you've got tax to consider first for example 630 pound a year tax straight away and then you've got regular servicing you need i can't speak of enough importance this is it's it's a paramount importance it needs regular servicing yearly to do all the checks if you keep this car topped up with all of its liquids and regular servicing it is gonna pay back tenfold a 2.7 v6 diesel version of these Range Rover Sports out on the road represents great value today if you keep it topped up and serviced. Have I said service enough yet? No, get it serviced every year. So the Range Rover Sport was subjected to five recalls in total. Early on 2005, there was a fault with the rear seat belts and the parking function in the automatic gearbox. Then 2000, and six, I believe there was a problem with the wheel balancing uh, weights. Uh, they were wrecking the hoses and the sensors. And then 2009, there was problems with the brake servos and fuel pump issues. So just something else to double check in your, in your service history, something to be aware of. I love the seating position. I'm so high, on the, high up on the road, I can see all the bonnet and it feels good. You know, you're in a uh, Range Rover. I've been in some newer versions recently, so this is a little bit dated, but it's a classic, it's cool. I love the little 4x4 display as well. Let's talk about some stats then, because I'm in the 2.7 V6. It's 190 brake horsepower, not the most. It's a Range Rover Sport, 
but it doesn't really have the sporty element because 0 to 62 is 11.9 seconds. I'm getting somewhere not fast, but I don't care. I've got the off-road capability. I've got the towing of 3,500 3, kilograms I can tow with this. And it's built on the same chassis as the Discovery 3. And some people have said, actually, they prefer going off-roading in the Range Rover Sport than the Disco. Man, go figure, that's weird. So I've got all of that packed into this car and it's gonna be more efficient because you can get those V8s, can't you? So when it first came out, you were given a 4.4 naturally aspirated V8 petrol. Didn't go down too well. They got rid of it in 2007. Or you had a 4.2 supercharged V8. And they got rid of both of those and then they brought out a five liter supercharged and then a five liter naturally aspirated. And then you could choose the 2.7 went. It came at three liter diesel. And then there was a 3.6 liter V8 diesel but this gets 28.2 miles per gallon the range is dropping quite quickly but if i was in one of the v8s it'd be dropping much quicker and that's around 12 miles per gallon they would get so this is the more efficient one keep this serviced it will, it will run you well you'll save a little bit of money on the mpg but if you're buying this car you're not trying to scrimp and save you want to showcase the car you want to show it off you love Land Rover, Range Rover, the brand. And you're gonna get a good working unit in this car. And it's not too, I'm just trying to listen out for some noise. It's good. I'm enjoying my experience and I'm, I'm really impressed with the interior because this is 2009, the wood's still in great condition. The seats, the leather seats are great. There's no cracks, there's no splits. Everything has been kept pretty well and the four previous owners they've loved this car you can tell and immediately you will get that vibe when you're looking for your car inside of the interior but so so far I'm just sitting back chillaxing and I'm I'm loving the experience as I mentioned previously if you're looking for an older car older gen range go for the top spec if you can now this HSE spec higher spec equipment has got heated seats in the front brilliant it's got heated seats in the back as well we've got those side steps and you get to have all of the benefit of someone else costing those options because let's be honest when you cost options now it, it adds up doesn't it and when you're buying a used car a little bit of a bargain someone else has paid it all for you you get to reap the benefits so that's why i think it's always worth going for the top spec trim do your research go out there and, and, and have a look at the options list and go, yes, please. Also, anyone out there that's owned a Range Rover before, let me know your experience in the comments because what I found with some of the videos that we've done and reviewed, people have told us their experiences with cars, with Land Rover, and some of them said, you know what, Oliver, we've had no problems. This is the car I've owned. This is the model. Haven't had any issues, and that's good to know because, let's be honest, when we think of Land Rover, everyone starts going oh reliability wouldn't wouldn't touch them with a barge pole and a lot of those people are people that have never owned a land rover or, or range rover or whatever so i love to know people's experiences put it in the comments your experiences what you've had maybe you've had some of the faults we spoke about today or maybe you've had some different bits but people that are researching out there buying old cars can use this video and look in the comments and help them out I've got to do a massive shout out to Clint and the boys at Crystal Motor Group in Northampton for letting us do a review on the car and doing a bit of a buying guide. Big shout to them. Hopefully we'll be doing some more reviews. If you want to have a look at some of their cars, we'll put a link in the description below. Right now, I want to find out if that rear bench in the back is really stiff. I've got a passenger with me. Adam, talk to me about comfort levels. Okay, so... We're in the back of the, the first generation Range Rover and I'm, I'm actually quite impressed with the interior. I do quite like the sort of cream leather. You know, it's, it's a bit old man, but with the wood as well. But I, I'm quite liking it. It's, it's a bit sort of like old school. Uh, comfort levels, no complaints really. It's sort of what you expect. It's a bit sort of wallowy. The suspension is quite soft, but I would say it's a smooth ride and it is comfortable. The only thing the back sort of is lacking is I can't see any cup holders. 
it's a bit of a shame, but I do have my heated seat on, so pretty good. Brilliant, I love that. All I got from that was, it's a bit old man. Okay, so we're gonna make our way back to Crystal Motor Group. We've had a good bit of fun in the car, driving it, the suspension is great. Everything, all the checks are really good so far. This, this vehicle's given me no reason to worry. I'll tell you what though, the MPG, we said 28.2 MPG. Now I reset the trip at the beginning, so I'm gonna have a little look as we're on our way back and it says we are averaging 26.3. Now that's not bad, is it? Literally two miles out, so pretty efficient. Obviously you're gonna get better in other cars, but you don't want other cars, you want a Range Rover. So 26.3 MPG we are averaging, not bad. Also, you're probably wondering throughout this episode, Oliver, you haven't told us the price. Tell us the price, how much is it up for? There's a reason why I haven't told you the price, because I'm gonna tell you at the end, when we get back, trying to build up a little bit of suspense, I'm gonna tell you the price right at the end and your thoughts when we get back to Crystal Motor Group, which we're on our way back now. So that has been our episode on the Generation 1 2009 Range Rover Sport HSE. Wow, wow, what an what incredible day. Big thank you to Crystal Motor Group for letting us take this car out. As I said, Body work on this is exceptional. It's really good. Hopefully that came through on the video. So what have we done in this video? It's been a bit of a buying guide. We spoke about some of the potential faults and we spoke about things to be aware of. Now that's not to say it's guaranteed it's gonna happen because some people have had these cars and they've had no issues. So anyone that has any experience of owning a Range Rover, let us know in the comments so we can look and use this as a resource to find out what kind of issues you've had. This is what you've all been waiting for. The price, okay, get ready. The price for this is 8,995 pounds. So what I wanna know from you guys right now in the comments, would you buy or would you pass? I think it's a good deal, but then I've driven it, all right? I've driven this. Also, you're gonna get three months warranty so from Crystal Motor Group. So if you did buy it, you could take it out, three months, drive it everywhere. See what comes up, what little niggles, which, which faults. All right, and you've got that three month warranty. I've had fun, I hope you've had fun. As always, if you've liked the episode, throw us a like, comment down below, buy or pass what you think of the car, get subbed, and we'll see you on the next one.